Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be going over the concept of resolution as well as how resolution affects your photo editing and printing. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.14 for this tutorial which at the time of this video is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com as always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And as I just mentioned, I have my GIMP book of layers, which you can purchase on Amazon or get it free with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So the reason I'm doing this tutorial today is that there is a decent amount of confusion around the concept of resolution, especially when it has to do with how images are displayed on your computer, as well as how they are displayed on your website or when you print an image. And the best place to start is the technical concept of the pixel itself. A pixel is really a digital unit and it doesn't have any sort of real measurement in the real world or the physical world. That's why you have to convert a pixel into a real world unit as the GIMP team calls it. This is where resolution comes in. So resolution is really a conversion of the digital unit of a pixel into a physical unit such as inches or centimeters for example. Most images by default will have a resolution of 72 pixels per inch when imported into an image editor such as GIMP. This is because most computer monitors commonly have a resolution of 72 pixels per inch or in other words, 72 pixels are going to be crammed into a one by one inch square. I'll further define this concept in a little bit, so if you don't quite get it yet, don't worry. So modern cameras typically contain multiple megapixels and a megapixel is going to be one million pixels. For example, a Canon 5D Mark IV is going to contain 30.4 megapixels, or in other words, in a single image, it's going to have 30,400,000 pixels. By comparison, the Canon 7D, which is the camera that I use for pretty much all my photos, is going to contain 18 megapixels, or in other words, it's going to have about 18 million pixels per image. Finally, a different camera from another manufacturer, the Sony a7R II, is going to contain 42.4 megapixels in a single image, or in other words, we'll have 42,400,000 pixels in a single image. If you're wondering why the Sony a7R II and the Canon 5D Mark IV contain more megapixels than something like the Canon 7D, the main reason is that the 7D uses a crop sensor, whereas the Canon 5D Mark IV and the a7R II both are full frame cameras. So this allows them to basically include more pixels in a single area for a single image. Cameras that capture images with a higher number of megapixels are going to produce larger images when it comes to printing because there are more pixels that can be spread out across a potential print area. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate how this megapixel concept translates into your actual image sizes here. So as I mentioned, I take photos with a Canon 7D which produces images that are 18 megapixels in size. The image size is based on the fact that the width of my image is 5,184 pixels wide and the height of my image is 3,450 pixels high. So the actual size of my image or the total area of my image is going to be this number, the width times the height. So when I multiply the width and the height of this image, I'm going to get an area of about 18 million pixels and that's where our 18 megapixel figure comes from. GIMP will always display the dimensions of your image up top here. And if I wanna see the resolution of this image, I can go to image, scale image. And here you'll see the width and height of my image displayed as pixels and the X and Y resolution here displayed as pixels per inch. I can change the resolution here based on different units so I can have pixels per millimeters, pixels per point, pixels per centimeter and so on. So a lot of the confusion with resolution has to do with what's the difference between resolution in the digital world and resolution in the physical world. To clear things up, I'll tell you guys this, 
Resolution doesn't really have anything to do with the digital world. You can pretty much throw out the concept of resolution when you're only working digitally. Resolution is really only coming into play whenever you are printing something. And this is actually counter to what I've said many times before in previous tutorials. I've always mentioned that when you're exporting an image, you wanna export it to 72 pixels per inch whenever you are using it on a website or anywhere on the web, versus when you're printing something, you're going to export it to 300 pixels per inch. So to clear some of this up, I wanna demonstrate a few things inside of GIMP here. So let me start by closing this out. So right now our image is fully displayed inside of our GIMP window here because it's zoomed out. So right now my zoom is set to 18.2%. I can change the zoom of the image by clicking on here and just coming up to 100%. So this is what my image looks like fully zoomed in. And because there are much more pixels in this image than there are pixels displayed in my monitor, the image actually extends well beyond the boundaries of both the GIMP window and hypothetically my monitor window here. So let me come back down here and just change this back to 18.2%. So remember this image currently has a default resolution of 72 pixels per inch. What's gonna happen if I increase the resolution here to something like 300 pixels per inch? Well, I'll come over here and go to image, scale image, and I'll come down here and change my X resolution to 300. And because I have this little chain icon locked here, when I hit the tab key, my Y resolution will automatically change to that same resolution. And now I'll come over here and hit scale. And as you can see, absolutely nothing has changed about this image. And so up top here, the dimensions are the same. We have 5,184 pixels wide by 3,456 pixels high and I'm still zoomed in at 18.2% and I can zoom in to 100% and the image still looks exactly the same. The reason for this is that your computer monitor is going to treat pixels as the same exact size no matter what resolution you have your image set to because pixels are a digital unit and resolution is the conversion of that digital unit into a physical unit. So the real difference that's occurring when you change the resolution is how large this image is going to be when you print it. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna come over to another image here that I have open in GIMP. And this image I have labeled as print image. You'll notice that the dimensions of this image are the same as the image we were just working with. So it's still 5,184 pixels by 3,456 pixels. I also have this set to 72 pixels per inch, which was the default resolution from before. So if I come up here and go to image, scale image, once again, you'll see that the image size in terms of width and height in pixels are the same and the X and Y resolution are the same. But here's the main difference. I can preview the print size of this image. So if I physically print this image into the real world or the physical world, we can see what size this image will actually be on something like a piece of paper. So I'll hit cancel here. And if I come over to image, print size, you'll see the width and height of my image will be 72 inches wide by 48 inches high and that's based on the resolution of 72 pixels per inch. And I'll exit out of this so you can see I have those dimensions marked off here. So this is how big my image will be if I print it at the current resolution it's at and the current size it's at. However, if I change the resolution of this, so if I come over to image, scale image, and I change this to a resolution of 300 pixels per inch and hit the tab key and hit scale, Nothing happens to the digital or the pixel version of my image. However, if I come over here to image, print size, you'll see the print size has now changed. So the physical size of this image in the real world will be 17.28 inches by 11.52 inches. So an increase in the resolution has decreased the physical size of this image. And let me exit out of the print size dialog here. So I'll come over and I'll hide these dimensions here and I'm going to show dimensions I created earlier that display how large my print image will be based on a 300 pixel per inch resolution. So here you can see our dimensions are a little bit smaller now and our resolution has increased. So let's think about why the physical size of our image has decreased What's happening when we increase our resolution is we're increasing the number of pixels that are going to be crammed into one inch. So instead of having just 72 pixels inside of a single inch, 
Now we have 300 pixels inside of a single inch. So we've basically crammed more pixels into that tiny area. The benefit of this is that you're going to get a higher quality image because there are more pixels inside of a smaller area. And these more pixels basically equate to more detail. So on the other hand, if I reduce the total number of pixels inside of an inch, that's going to increase the size of my image overall, but it's going to decrease the quality of that image. So let me just demonstrate that here. I'll come over to image, scale image, and now let's change the resolution to a really low resolution. So something like 10 pixels per inch and I'll hit scale. Nothing has changed about the digital form of my image, but if I go now to image, print size, you'll see my image is now really large. But the trade-off here is that with this larger image, it's going to produce a lower quality final result. Earlier in the tutorial, I mentioned that whenever you change the resolution, contrary to what I previously believed, it's actually not going to have any effect on uploading the image to something like a website. And I just want to demonstrate why that is. So if I come over to my file explorer here, you'll see I have three different images saved to this file. So what I did is I changed the resolution of each image so that it has its own resolution. So I have 10 pixels per inch, 72 pixels per inch, and 300 pixels per inch. The first thing I wanna point out about these three different images is that despite them each having different resolutions, the file size is exactly the same over here. So the 10 pixel per inch image is the exact same size as the 300 pixel per inch image. The other thing I wanna point out is that if I double click on this first image, and these images have the dimensions that I set up here, you'll see that the 10 pixel per inch image looks exactly the same as the 72 pixel per inch image, and that one looks exactly the same as the 300 pixel per inch image. So in the digital world, changing the pixels per inch has zero effect on how the image is displayed here. That of course begs the question, how do I decrease my file size so that I can save room on my website and also speed up its performance? And the answer to that is that you have to change the actual number of pixels in the image. And of course there is an easy way to do that inside of GIMP and that is by scaling the image. So I'm going to exit out of this image here and minimize my file explorer. So we're back in GIMP. And let me navigate back over here to our digital image and I'm going to change the zoom back to 18.2%. So adjusting the resolution does not change the size, but if I go to image, scale image, I can come over here and change the width and height. So I can change the actual number of pixels by typing in something like 1920 and our chain link icon is locked over here. So if I hit the tab key, that will automatically update the height. So now we have 1920 by 1280. And when I hit the scale button, it's going to scale the image down to this new width and height and actually have a new image open over here with these new dimensions. So we've scaled this image down now, and as a result, we have less pixels in our image. So instead of having 18 megapixels, it's now just two and a half megapixels. Or in other words, in order to reduce the file size from its original size down to 1920 by 1280, we've removed 15 and a half million pixels from our image. This of course will save you room whenever you are uploading an image to something like a website. But keep in mind, of course, that whenever you remove that many pixels, you will inevitably be reducing the overall quality of the image. And actually the same applies when you scale an image up. So instead of removing pixels from the image when you scale an image up, you are adding in pixels that don't actually exist. And so that's the value that GIMP provides as an image editor is that it uses some tools and features to basically invent pixels and add in missing pixels whenever you're trying to scale an image up. But a byproduct of that is that you will have a quality loss in your image. I also wanna point out here that the letters on top demonstrate how much smaller this image is because these are the same size letters or the same size font as I used over here. So I did not change the size of the text that says digital image. These are both the same size text, but as you can see, the image is now much smaller compared to that text than it was in our original. Coming back over here to the smaller digital image, the last concept I wanna cover here is that because we reduced the number of pixels in this image by scaling it down, if I did try to print this image using the same resolutions we used earlier, so either 72 pixels per inch or 300 pixels per inch, the image will be smaller overall because we've removed so many pixels from this image. Remember we removed 15 and a half million pixels and therefore that's 15 and a half million pixels less that there are to fill in something like an inch on a photograph. So if I come over here and go to image, print size, we can see now that the width and height of this, instead of being around 17 inches, is going to be 6.4 inches. 
and that's at a resolution of 300. If I change this to 72 pixels per inch and hit the tab key, you can see the largest this image will be now is 26 inches wide instead of the over 70 inches wide that it was before. So I'll exit out of this. So there's actually one more concept I wanna cover and that's removing pixels from a single dimension of your image. So by scaling the image, I showed you how to remove pixels from both the width and the height. What if you just wanted to remove pixels from, for example, the height? So right now this is 1920 by 1280. The dimensions of a high definition image are typically 1920 by 1080, which means we have to remove some of the pixels from the width. Well, I can do that by coming over here and grabbing something like the crop tool. And I can come down here and check the fixed aspect ratio option and type in 1920 colon 1080. And let me just hide the numbers here from my dimensions that I drew. So now using this crop tool, I can just crop the width of my image. So whenever you change just a single dimension of your image, that's called changing the aspect ratio. So right now I'm changing my aspect ratio to 1920 by 1080 since I'm shortening the height. Now when I double click on this, we've removed pixels just from one dimension, which is our height. And our final image is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So remember our original image we were working with was 18 megapixels. Now after scaling and cropping our image, if I grab a calculator here and I type in 1920 times 1080, hit the enter key, our final image is going to be just above two megapixels or just above two million pixels. Now if I come over and go to file, export as, and let me just navigate over to the folder where our other images are. I'll just grab one of these names and change this to 1920 and come over here and hit export. And I'll make sure the quality is turned all the way up like the other ones and hit export again. Now if I come over here to our file explorer, you'll see our image size, our file size overall is much smaller now. So it's just below two megabytes here or 2000 kilobytes. Whereas all the other images here with varying resolutions all had about 13 and a half megabytes or 13,500 kilobytes. So in summary, resolution is going to essentially affect the size and the quality of your images when you print them. And it's not really going to have an effect on how your images are displayed digitally. On the other hand, if you want to reduce the file size of your image or reduce the size of how it's displayed on your digital monitor, you're going to want to do that by reducing the number of overall pixels in the image, which you can do using something like the scale image tool. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.